Hi. Welcome to Anaprime Recap. You discover that you have a bizarre curse, there are no organs in your body, only several layers of skin that hold other, younger versions of your appearance. We continue our dark journey through the Junji Ito Maniac series. Our first story today is titled, Layers of Fear. In the year 1996, a group of researchers are exploring underground at an archaeological site in search of new discoveries. Yamaoka, one of the group, alerts his professor about having possibly found something unusual. Soya deduces that some creature was buried in that place and is probably what generated so many layers in the ground. Yamaoka, on the orders of his teacher, continues digging and quickly finds a human skull. Soya says that perhaps a child has been buried there, after all, it could be an ancient ritual where people cover the body of the deceased with several thin layers of clay until a large tomb is formed. The young man responsible for finding the skull claims that this could be a major archaeological discovery, but his teacher warns him that they would need to acquire more clues to really reach a conclusion. Later, a heavy rainstorm hits the exploration site, everyone immediately stops their work and heads for a safe place, except Professor Soya who at this moment was holding the human skull in his hand in the middle of the storm. A few years have passed since it happened, in 2017, a mother returns home with her two daughters by car after visiting the family father's grave. While talking to each other, the woman always complimented and admired the beauty of her youngest daughter, Rimi. In parallel to this, her oldest daughter, Narumi, says that she never received the same treatment as her sister did, telling her mother that she didn't care for her at all. The woman when confronted by her eldest daughter replies that she prefers Rimi to her because the girl possesses a charming beauty, while Narumi is called ugly and unimportant. The older daughter is shocked to hear those harsh words from her own mother and turns her attention away from the road. In that brief second a truck appears in her direction, the girl is quickly alerted by her family and ends up making a maneuver to avoid a possible collision. The car goes off the road and a few seconds later Narumi regains consciousness and sees the result of his action. As she moved the vehicle at high speed, she hit a road sign that was on the road and the object crashed into her sister's face, leaving it completely disfigured. On the same day, Rimi is taken to a hospital, meanwhile Narumi is blamed by her mother for the accident occurring. Both are waiting in a waiting room until a doctor calls the two to observe the girl's condition. The doctor tells them that Rimi's face was recovering on its own, he also reveals that during the examinations performed, it was discovered that the girl has no brain, organs or bones, her body is completely made of several layers of skin. The girl's mother thinks this is crazy and at first believes it to be a lie, but as she listens to the doctor's explanation, she begins to laugh in panic at what she is witnessing. The doctor also reveals that the total number of layers present on the girl's body represents her years of life. That is, Rimi has within her the same appearance as when she was a fetus, a child, and now a teenager. The girl's mother is interested to hear this, and tells the doctor not to perform any tests on her daughter, because when Rimi has fully recovered, she will be taken home as soon as possible. While waiting for the girl to recover, Narumi tells her mother that this is a hereditary curse, after all, her father found years ago a skull of a person buried in several layers, then he became hallucinated with that object and passed away nine years later. Narumi also says that after the loss of her father a year later, Rimi was born with the curse, furthermore, the eldest daughter also reveals that part of the curse is also in her body, as it is also made of several layers. At her family's home, Rimi wakes up after recovering. She says she is tired of all this, as modern medicine is unable to cure her illness. While her mother tries to calm her down, Narumi deduces that the cause of all these problems is the skull found by her father, so a possible solution would be to bury it back in the ground. That night, the girl's mother is desperate to get in touch with her two-year-old daughter Rimi's version of herself, she has created a special connection with her daughter at this age and wishes by all means to relive her best moments again. The woman standing next to her daughter calls tirelessly for the two-year-old girl until she gets tired and gives up, but a child's voice begins to sound from inside her daughter's body. The mother is hopeful about this and continues to listen to the voice that asks to be removed from inside that body. Minutes later, Narumi wakes up to hear a scream from her sister, she goes to her room and finds her mother ripping the skin from Rimi's face. The woman says she will remove all existing layers until she finds her two-year-old daughter. Narumi is horrified to see that grotesque scene, but then she also hears the voice of her sister when she was still a child. The mother then begins to quickly remove all the layers of skin on her daughter's face until she finally finds her favorite version of Rimi. The little girl keeps calling for her mother, so the woman asks Narumi to help her remove all the remaining layers of skin to finally get her little girl back. However, upon removing numerous layers he realizes that the structure of her daughter's body was bizarre, with long, thin limbs. The mother then stands up and with a pocket knife makes a cut on her own face, she tells Narumi that she is probably also part of the curse, 
so she could remove the layers of her skin until she gets her 38-year-old appearance. However, as she does so, she realizes that she has not been affected by the curse and screams as she feels excruciating pain. Later that night, Narumi takes two meals to her mother who has her face completely bandaged and to her sister who looks monstrous. Now we will move on to the second story, called, Back Alley. Ishida is a young college student who moves into a boarding house, however, only the owner and her daughter live there. The woman asks the young man to stay in the room that belonged to her daughter for more comfort. The hostess seems well-meaning and does her best to make the young man feel comfortable in his new home. The very day he arrives, Ishida decides to walk around the area and notices that next to the boarding house there is an extremely high wall with a fence. He is puzzled by this, but goes on his way as usual. In the evening, the young man joins the landlady and her daughter Shinobu for dinner, he has a shy personality, but manages to talk amiably with both of them. After dinner, Ishida starts to read a book in his room, but something takes his concentration away, he starts to hear children's laughter in the alley next to the guest house, so he goes to the balcony of his room and asks them to be quiet. The young man realizes that it was no use, then he scales the balcony of his room and quickly holds on to the huge wall of the alley, Ishida again tries to talk to the people who are making noise, but realizes that there was no one in the alley, even he can't see anything, just a vast darkness. The next day, Ishida receives a visit from Shinobu in his room, the girl volunteers to help him organize his books on a shelf, the young man thanks her and comments on the intriguing fact that occurred last night. Shinobu replies that she also hears voices coming out of the alley every day, but she believes that there is no one there, she clarifies that maybe these voices are of people who are far away and echo until they reach the room. The girl also warns Ishida not to try to jump off the balcony again, after all, he could get hurt and his life is precious. Upon hearing this, the young man takes it in jest and says he will not do it again. At night, Ishida tries to read his book, but he again hears strange voices coming from the next alley, he puts his ear close to the wall and realizes that a horrifying voice is calling out relentlessly for Shinobu. The next day, Ishida leaves the boarding house to begin his morning routine, but he is stopped by a strange man on the street, the fellow takes the young man to a private place and begins to tell his story. The man reveals that he lived in that same room exactly 10 years ago, he says he still has nightmares about what he experienced in that house. The man reveals that there is a steel hatch in the alley, and inside it are hidden the bodies of three young men who lost their lives there, and there are stains on the walls that at night start to move and talk. The subject reveals that he saw all these phenomena thanks to a window in the room, but the young man replies that there is no window in the room. Ishida doesn't believe this story and deduces that the whole thing is just a joke. That same day, the young man finds himself thoughtful in his room, he then moves his bookcase from its place and observes that there really was a window hidden there all the time. Ishida also notices that there was a rope, he hangs himself on it and begins to climb down the wall of the boarding house towards the alley. He realizes that the strange man's account actually had some truth to it, for he found the stains on the wall in a hatch. The young man realizes that the entrance was closed with a lock, so he takes a stone and starts trying to break it. As he breaks the lock and looks inside the hatch, he is startled, for there are indeed bodies stored there. Ishida panics and tries to climb back into the room, but someone strikes him in the hand with a knife, he falls to the ground and realizes that Shinobu was the one responsible for attacking him. The young girl, realizing that the young man has discovered her secret, begins to reveal the whole story of her past. When she was still a child, three bullies thought they owned the alley and wouldn't let anyone play there. Her father found out what she had done and to hide his daughter's bloodthirsty act, he built a large wall to block the entrance to the alley. Days passed and Shinobu took two classmates she hated to the site and took their lives right there, she put their bodies in the hatch and went on with her life as normal. When her father found out what she had done, the young woman eliminated him and also put his body in the hatch. The girl reveals that after that, strange stains appeared on the walls, and at night, they take the shape of the people who lost their lives. Shinobu tells her that every night they call her name, but as long as she doesn't go outside she will be safe. The girl realizes that Ishida has fainted from the fall and decides to climb down the rope to see what happened, but when she reaches the alley, the rope leading to the room snaps. Shinobu is trapped in the alley until the night, where the stains begin to move and advance towards her to finally take revenge. Now, let's begin the story of the third story, entitled, Library of Visions. A little young man comes face to face with a monstrous creature in his library. Years later, that little young man has married Koko and they live together in a large house. Every day, Guro reads a book and has a gigantic library with all kinds of tales and stories. On this particular day, he notices that a book has disappeared from its place. His wife replies that she took it to read and would soon return it. 
Guru gets angry and asks her to return it as soon as possible, because it was his mother's favorite book. At night, the man continues in his library, every day he writes in a kind of diary and keeps all his accounts in a safe. That night, Guru has a nightmare where all his books were disappearing, he wakes up in a panic, but is comforted by his wife. The next morning, he goes to his library and realizes that the book his mother loved was not there. Coco claims that she returned the book to the library and doesn't know what happened. The man soon begins to panic and struggles against the shelves, his wife takes advantage of the situation and begins to read his diary. She identifies in one of the notes from when he was still a little boy, that his mother was seeing a totally bizarre man. Later, Guru is visited by a pale and strange woman, after a few minutes, he tells his wife that he received in his house the main character of the book his mother loved, the entity recited the whole book to him, from beginning to end. Coco replies that it was only a dream and that her husband should rest, but Guru states with certainty that he saw the character from the book and that at that moment, she was right behind his wife. A few days later, Guru finds himself in a state of total madness in his library, he tells Coco that he has been visited by an evil being, it belongs to the book that his father loved to read, it is the scariest novel ever. That night, the creature recited the entire book in a horrifying voice and left, but Guru knows that he will return. Coco then says that her husband should go to the doctor for a consultation, but he replies that his problems will not be solved that way. Later, while in the library, the monstrous creature appears again and stares at him with a dark look. Coco wakes up next to Guru and notices that he is extremely scared, her husband gets up and starts to recite the whole book that his father loved to read, while doing this, several cuts started to appear all over his body. After reciting the entire book, Guru believes that he has rid himself of the creature and it should no longer pester him. A few days pass and again the book that his mother loved has disappeared from the bookshelf. The young man blames himself for this and decides to memorize all the books in the library, for if one of them is missing, he will have memorized it in his memory. So he starts reading all the stories, tales, and fables until he can't read anymore. At a certain point, he says that he needs to erase old memories in his mind to make room for new stories, and so he does. While exhausted in the library, he receives a visit from his wife, and because of his exhaustion, he bumps into one of the stacks of books that was serving as a support for a lamp, and the flames contained in the object spread through the books and quickly causes a huge fire, destroying everything. After all the chaos, in a hospital, a patient named Shogo Shirasaki, escapes from his room, and on his bed he leaves two novel books and Coco's logbook. Finally, we come to the fourth macabre story, entitled, The Long Hair in the Attic, Hiratsuka and Chimi return home after a date, in the car the two have an argument and the young man says that his girlfriend does everything to please him and seems to have no opinion of her own, she tries to argue, but the young man just ignores her and leaves. Chim arrives at her home and finds her younger sister, Eri, the little girl says that possibly a mouse is walking about her sister's room. Chimi hits the ceiling and the noise disappears. She is left alone and begins to remember her past, where at the time, Hiratsuka was more understanding, being the one responsible for her hair being so big, because he claimed that she would look beautiful if she let her hair grow. The young woman is totally hurt by doing everything her boyfriend wants and not getting the value she deserves. Chimi falls asleep after spending most of the night crying. In the morning, when she wakes up, she realizes that the mouse that had been hiding in her room is dead and entwined by her long hair. She is frightened by what has happened, but ends up being optimistic that she has at least managed to get rid of the animal. The girl reflects on the size of her hair while washing it, and comes to the conclusion that the best choice will be to cut it to break with her past. So she asks her sister to help her, Eri goes to her mother and asks her where the scissors are, while looking for the object, the girl hears her sister's scream coming from her room. Eri quickly climbs the stairs and upon arriving at the scene she is confronted with the most frightening scene of her life. Chimi was covered in blood and her head had been removed from her body. Some time after the event, Hiratuska wakes up in the middle of the night with a phone call, he was already in a relationship with another woman, and when he answers the phone, he doesn't hear any words, only a shrill noise. He realizes that that sound was similar to the grinding of Chimi's teeth, but he quickly disregards it as being her, as the girl had already passed away. A few days later, Eri asks her father to lend her the flashlight, because it has been a few days since there has been the sound of mice in the attic and they must probably be trapped in the mousetraps. The girl's father, who had previously been paying tribute to his dead daughter, decides to go to the attic to investigate the situation. Eri waits until she realizes that her father is taking too long, so she goes to the attic to look for him herself. Finding her father paralyzed in a corner, she tries to call for him. But the man was no longer alive, with the flashlight pointed at his face, there was an expression of horror, soon, Eri looks around and comes across something haunting. Her sister's head was suspended by her own hair, 
The girl tries to pull it out, but can't, as she touches the hair, her hands get hurt. Then the hair starts moving on its own and acting on its own, it leaves that dark place, moves around the house until it finds the exit door. A few hours later, Hiratusuka was suspended by the same cursed hairs as Chimi, they pierced various parts of his body, and in the end, destroyed him completely. So, what did you think of this anime? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, like it and subscribe for more anime recaps. See you next time.